What's up everyone? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Rocket Vlogs. I've been having the rocket building itch pretty bad lately and unfortunately the last Tripoli Idaho launch just got postponed a couple of weeks because we didn't get a lot of rain this summer so the BLM doesn't want to let us fly for fire danger which means my flying is done for the year unless I take something to Midwest Power or maybe might make it to Rockstock and the off chance that I make it to Rockstock in the first place I might fly a rocket there. But today, by popular demand, I'm working on the Lock Precision 7.5 inch Saturn V that myself and my dad started last year in the winter. I wanna say it was December 21, so almost a year ago. Um, time goes by real fast, huh? But uh, yeah, so since there's no launch this weekend or next weekend in Tripoli, Idaho, I will be uh, in California the third weekend of October, I'll be at Midwest Power the fourth weekend of October, and then November for my job, I will be at SEMA and then the LA Auto Show. Between those though is Rockstock. So I might see about going down to the LA area early and uh, going to Rockstock, potentially flying a rocket, like I said. But if you don't know what I do for a living, please check out Motor Biscuit on YouTube. I'll put the link in the description. You can click the top corner. Um, I even used the seven and a half inch Honest John kit in one of my videos when I was driving a brand new C8 Corvette and I jokingly tried to fit it in the car, which very obviously wouldn't. I am the social media manager. A lot of you guys know that I used to write for them, but I am now full time working on social media stuff, which means I'm producing video and photo content for Instagram and YouTube. It is my dream job. It's absolutely insane. And uh, I would love for you guys to go check it out. If you love cars, you'll probably love all the stuff we're doing over there at Motor Biscuit. So please go check that out at any rate. I'm gonna pull a Saturn V out and we're gonna start doing fillets on it, uh, which is gonna be interesting because the fillets don't need to look that pretty because they get covered with fiberglass. I'll show you. Okay, allow me to explain here. As you can see, the fins are in. Yes, I went with the 75 and 4 38s, just like I wanted to do with this, the Honest John. Um, yes, I know that I messed up and I should have done 554s just for authenticity, really, if nothing else. Um, also because five I-65s would be insane, but you know, hindsight is 2020. Uh, this will still be cool. I'm thinking maybe I bought a K-185 for it, but it's just not enough middle motor. It's, it's like right on the cusp of being too heavy. It's like 3.2 to one. So obviously with a cluster, that would be fine, but I want to go with a motor that I know is going to be safe by itself just in case the outboards don't light or whatever happens. Uh, historically, I've had trouble with that. So anyway, these are the fins. As you can see, virtually no fillets at all that are gonna go on them because uh, these guys then slide over like that and get glued down. They might need a little bit of uh, sanding, some fit and finish here, but uh, mostly, Pretty good to go. And we're just gonna have to figure out how to glue those down sufficiently. There's a lot of room for error here, so I'm not even going to like tape the lines like I usually would on fillets since it's all gonna be covered up anyway. So that's as good as that's gonna get. And I'm just gonna do some five minute epoxy fillets to throw it in there. Um, I'm not worried about it. I saw one of these standard build, no glass, uh, survive an L1000 at Airfest or LDRS a couple years ago. I can't remember for sure, but uh, Jason from Lock Precision, or it might have been Eric, Eric Kamberg, I can't remember. Somebody put an L1000 and it was fine, so I am not worried um, if I was going to do like an M1297 or something. It might be cause for concern, but I think we're going to be okay. I also don't want to make these too gnarly because I'm secretly hoping that it'll still be light enough to fly on a single K270 because that would just be awesome. Maybe a couple H45s in there just for good measure. But yeah, that'll do. So now, how do we kill this five minutes? All 
Okay, so I realize I don't need to cut those anymore. We already cut them. I kind of forgot about that. What needs to happen is they need to be held in the correct shape while they're glued. And because I don't want to hold them here while 5 minute epoxy dries, I'm just going to uh, come back with some CA at some point. And um, we can get it all tacked in place and then maybe do some fillets on the inside. Hopefully keep them from breaking off on landing. All right, welcome to the new and improved rocket working area at my parents' garage. You probably can't see me very well, but I clean a whole bunch of stuff up. That's why that camera can be there now because there's not a wall of foxes anymore. And uh, yeah, made a lot of good progress on cleaning this garage up. Um, so now certain commenters can shut the I also got this neat little shelving unit to keep things a little better organized and you don't have to keep all the motors in boxes. Nothing quite reminds you of how many high power motors you didn't fly this season, quite like all the high power motors you didn't fly this season. But anyway, we're going to attach these awesome fiberglass, uh, I guess, engine cowls um, with some CA on the old Lock Saturn V. Okay, I've refined the technique a bit here. I'm just making sure that they're all consistent. Um, you can see there's quite a big gap there at the front of this one relative to like this one down here. This one also had it, um, which makes me think, you know, that these two didn't get cut deep enough, but they're consistent. So I don't know, it might've just been molding or, you know, you can't expect everything to be perfect all the time. So what I'm doing is just making sure they're all consistent distance from the back of the rocket. It's a perfect time for somebody to start vacuuming. And, uh, but what I've refined here is I'm going to mark where the uh, bonding surfaces stop because I kept putting CA past where it needed to go. And then what I've been doing, as you can see from this one, if you can see it, is I get the CA drying and then I pull everything into place and I tape it in place. And then I, I just let it sit for about 15 minutes last time. It was a long time for CA to dry. And uh, I kind of poured some uh, faux-ish CA fillets down on these bottom ones, but I'm not going to do that again. Instead, what I'm going to do is let all this CA tack up properly, and then we're going to come back and do some five-minute fillets in around everything on the inside, uh, especially where the molding or the cowl bonds to the airframe. And then, then we just have to do some refining, sanding, get all this extra adhesive off everything, and it's... Really, it's time to start painting it. I have to say, it's looking pretty cool. <laughs> I love this thing. I'm so excited I got a chance to buy one. Um, it was a lot of money, especially when I didn't have very much of it, but made the right call. Anyway, uh, speaking of the right call, I think what I'm going to do now is stand it up and mix up a big batch of West Systems with a bunch of colloidal silica in it so I can do all of these fillets at once. I was going to try to do it with five minute here and there, but West Systems for one is a much stronger epoxy and two, that'll get me one step closer to painting this thing faster instead of taking five minutes at a time for the next two hours. We'll just take 10 minutes right now and come back tomorrow and it'll all be dry and ready to go. Again, not beautiful, but it's gonna do what we need it to do. And we're back. Obviously, with it now standing at its proper height and supporting itself on those engine molding or cowl pieces, whatever, I had to stack it all up because look at it. It's a seven foot tall Saturn V. This thing is sick. This is the first time I've seen it like properly assembled. We put it together and kind of hovered those in roughly the right place, but this is the first time everything's glued together. So um, I wish I could say we we're going to start painting it and that's kind of the next step, but we still have some issues to situate with those cowls. Let me explain. 
Now you'll probably recall because you just saw it that uh, I slid these on and that left these little gaps in the back here but believe it or not the real Saturn V doesn't have that and uh, as much as this is a sports scale model it's going to bother me a lot if I don't cover those up. Luckily as we learned with the 12 inch Punisher no rocket is too big to make use of some good old popsicle sticks. So what we're going to do is CA tack these in place and then we're going to fill that gap with uh, some more West Systems epoxy with thickened, thickened with colloidal silica. And above all else, this rocket is a tough one for me to remember. It's okay if it's not perfect. It's okay if it's not perfect. It's freaking me out a little bit. But it's not like I could order parts to try again anyway. So uh, what this is is going to be a great exercise in fixing things that we've done wrong once again. I mean, I, I guess it's... It's as good as I could get it without spending a ridiculous amount of time trying to get it to just cooperate, so. I opted to leave these long until the epoxy is dry, that way the Dremel gets a little too radly when I'm trying to trim them down to size, it doesn't blow it off, although CA to wood is a bond that's uh, very difficult to break, but at any rate, figured no reason to risk it, so we'll just go for it. So now, we just gotta wait for this epoxy to dry, and then, uh, yeah, then we can refine everything, smooth everything out. This should sand pretty easily because I made it so thick, there's a lot of silica in there clean everything up, sand everything smooth, and then we should be able to start throwing primer at it. And uh, the good news is that the decals include the big black stripes, so all I have to do is paint it white, and then it's just a matter of getting the decals on straight. That's gonna be a problem. But at any rate, uh, that's situated, so I'll see you guys after this is dry. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for this episode of Rocket Vlogs. As you can see, there's gonna be a good bit more sanding and filling than I initially anticipated with this guy. That's okay. It's not like we aren't used to it. The sanding channel strikes again, but for now, I'm going to put an end to this because, uh, yeah, I'm not quite ready to dive into all that yet. But big progress made on the Saturn V. All the components, except for the tower and the uh, Av Bay, vent band there are painted white so obviously the first thing I'm going to do when I stack it all or when it dries is stack it all up and see what it looks like in the appropriate color but uh yeah I'll probably go grab some filler primer and see how much more damage we can undo with that and then a good couple wet sand will really give us an idea of how much we need to do but of course wet sanding got to be a little bit careful with this rocket because it is a cardboard kit. I can't just go gung-ho and dunk it in water like I do with fiberglass ones. At any rate, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please, if you like cars, go subscribe to Motor Biscuit. My Q4 goal is to hit 1,000 subscribers on that channel. I won't even lie to you, so might as well just be straight up and ask, right? trying to get to a thousand subscribers so please go check it out i'll put the link in the description and if you uh, want to help support the channel check out patreon.com slash rocket vlogs or go to rocketvlogs.com check out the merch and uh, this will probably be the last video i post before the midwest power videos start rolling out although if i keep working on stuff in between i might uh do some midweek uploads i also have another instructional video coming for wild man soon so you'll see that over on the wild man rocketry channel at any rate thank you guys so much for being here thank you for all your support and i will see you guys next time